fuel cell. Yeah. And maybe you want to meet me in New York and we'll take a leisurely drive across the country. This is a time of when we're going to arrive in each state. So it's one week until the Flood P1 has to be loaded in for SEMA. So we've come here to Tavares' shop to see how things are going. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to quote it. I'll just, uh, I'll just draw an accent if anything. Okay. No, I mean, I'll write a Saratoga after the fact if we do anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, not, not a... Uh, Freddie, SEMA's next week. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so it's not this week, so we're uh, good. Oh, Yeah, it's not okay. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got plenty of time, dude. <laughs> so, Freddie, obviously you you were kind of forced to delete this hybrid system. Yes. And I know that you're getting some pushback on it. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I was a proponent of deleting it because, I mean, realistically, it adds 150, 70, whatever horsepower it adds. Like... We're easily going to overcome that. The engine can hold up to it. Yeah. But uh, like, what what were the roadblocks you ran into as far as like this this battery? Well, I'll uh, I'll keep it to a quick thirty five minutes. Um, <laughs> so the battery for this car does not exist. And when I say it does not exist, they don't make them anymore. You can't find them because they only made three hundred seventy five cars. So uh, McLaren has discontinued all support for these batteries. The only battery you can get is a, uh, a Gen 2 or Gen 3 uh, Speedtail battery, and you're being put on a wait list for about a year or more. Uh, there's a lot of P1 owners that just have their P1 sit uh, to have this battery, which is worse in practically every way other than weight. So instead of having six to seven miles of range, you get one mile of range, and uh, you have actually less energy capacity in that battery. And uh, in the Speedtail, I believe in velocity mode, it only works after 200 miles an hour anyway, so it doesn't matter. It adds 400 pounds and it's $160,000. So I feel like if I'm gonna make the fastest, lightest P1 in the world, it doesn't make sense to have this antiquated uh, hybrid system in this car because we can make it up with turbos, with built engine. We can, we can make it up with what we have right here. And uh, I think this is gonna be like a really special car. Yeah, I think once people see the, the performance of it and realize how much we can overcome as far as weight and horsepower, I mean, oh, yeah. it's gonna be like, tenfold better than having a hybrid system in this thing. So the, the hybrid thing is fine. Uh, some manufacturers are going to, I mean, McLaren did the Artura hybrid and you can Google McLaren Artura to see how reliable they are. The answer to that is they're not. So um, they, the, the company can't make a reliable hybrid system. These had uh, rampant issues with batteries depleting. The, ch the, the charging system was bad. Um, you would have hybrid drive assembly leaks because people never drove their cars because they are $2 million. So I'm also making this car a lot more reliable. Um, so I can press the start button and it actually starts. <laughs> there you and go. It drives. And, and real, realistically, you're almost not taking the easy way out either because no. deleting the hybrid system yeah. is... Is, well, a, is a chore itself, coding yes. the computer, you know, recoding the computer and, and figuring all that out. So, so anyone that would think that this was, a, this was the easy way out, no. I, I don't, this was not an easy decision. No, no, not, not at all. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on theming and I want to make sure that this car, you know, is still ha has a soul of a P1. But I always thought the P1 was a successor to the F1. And uh, the F1 was, you know, the lightest, most powerful car that they could make at the time. And I feel like if we deleted this kind of superfluous system um, that, that was, that's antiquated now, it just makes the car a little bit further towards that goal. Yes. Um, having, you know, the, the, the ECU and all that stuff, it's not as easy as just taking out the hybrid system. <laughs> well, you just, I thought you'd just unplug it. Yeah, you just unplug it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, you have, to, you have to do a lot of custom coating. I'm not just putting like a, a regular harness in there because surprise, surprise, the suspension is different, the wing is different, the arrow is different, everything on this car is different. It has a different amount of ECUs than any other McLaren. So you have to custom code all of that so the, uh, so the hybrid system doesn't uh, give you any codes or well, the lack of hybrid system. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of work cut out for us. Um, this is not easy. 
but I think it's going to be the best possible outcome. Yeah, no, I agree. And now with the deleted hybrid system, my mind immediately goes to, well, there's room for a fuel cell yeah. and maybe you want to meet me in New York and we'll take a leisurely drive across the country. Yeah, yeah, just a leisurely at 100 and... At, at no point do you go up above, what, what is it? 175. Yeah, at no point. Yeah. yeah. 175, 176, too much. Yeah, so this is a pretty exciting build. This is Jack's Evo. So he didn't go totally crazy with power, and that's something that I love about these Evos, is at the five, 600 horsepower level, they can be really reliable and a lot of fun. Let's face it, you can build a 1,000 horsepower Evo, but now with DCT cars, GTRs, Porsches and stuff, it's never gonna be the fastest. So I like to like kind of like relive the glory days and this is the perfect build for it. An FP black, a mildly built engine. He won't have any problems with this thing. It'll probably make five, 600 wheel horsepower. It'll be excellent. And when, and when he blows three rods at the bottom of the block, he could take it to Cannonball Garage and they can build him a real engine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. He should be fine. No, he should be fine. <laughs> so talking about this Evo build, they did something really cool. The, the Evo's interior has always been like so cheap. So Jack just contacted E3 Customs in Fort Lauderdale and all he said is what, I want a GT3 inspired interior and let them kind of come up with a custom design. And I think it came out awesome. Check out this, check out this leather wrap dash. I mean, that was like the worst thing about Evos is the plastic dash. The seats were always pretty nice, but uh, they did a custom, uh, custom stitching, custom inserts. I mean, it came out absolutely great. Leave it to me. There's a McLaren 675 over there. They're rebuilding Tavares' P1. But I'm over here looking at this killer Astro. So I happened to be passing by the shop and it looked really interesting. I saw this Integra Type R, I saw some RB powered cars, so I had to check it out. And this is Drizza and Derek has invited us in to check it out. So Derek specializes in RB stuff like Nissans, Infinities, and that kind of stuff. It's him and his wife. His wife actually uh, disassembles engines and is part of the team. And it's a really cool husband and wife duo. And uh, they take in some really neat builds. Like, check this thing out. A 300ZX getting a VQ swap. Super cool. He's also got an old Honda from back when he used to race in the day. How fast was this back in the day? So I put this thing together, I ran it in English town, I did a 926 on the first run. Holy cow. And I parked it. That's fast, man. That's real fast. Oh, in English town, geez, I haven't heard anyone. <laughs> You're dating yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back in the day, man. Yeah, yeah, we used to be out there. And that was in 2004, I think. 2003, 2004. Oh, that was flying back then. Like that had to been one of the fastest ones around. He's got this killer G-Wagon, kind of the odd one out of the bunch, but you know, that's where I gravitate. So this is a 94 G-Wagon from Japan, right-hand drive, super unique. Not big in the power department with a three liter inline six, but uh, it is what it is. So just like any true car guy, um, and when you specialize, you like end up holding on to a lot of parts. But uh, you know, when you specialize in something, you know, it's a, it's a good idea to keep a lot around, especially RBs, because if, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, you can work on an RB26 or an RB25, ah, it's just a straight six. These cars are very proprietary, very difficult to find parts for, and in some, you really need to find somebody who knows what they're doing with these cars. We spent some time getting to know Derek, really cool guy, knowledgeable guy. He used to actually work for Nissan and Infiniti as an engineer, so he knows Nissans in and out. And like I said, the RB25, RB26 cars, you really need to find a specialist for. And he's here in Orlando, so I'd look him up if you've got one of those cars. Well, Freddie, you've got a few more days left. Yeah, uh, plenty of time. We're going to come back and okay. haul this thing to SEMA. Well, actually, when I say we, I mean Stan, behind, yeah, Stan behind, behind the, the camera. camera. Yeah. So uh, good luck. Let us know if you need anything. I need, can you, can you rebuild a P1? It, sure, we could, I guess we could load it in the trailer. We've done that before. Yeah, let's just do that right All now. All right, yeah, that yeah. sounds like a better yeah, idea. Yeah, cancel your flight. All right, let's go. Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs>